Hi guys, uh, this is a follow-up video from the Mangster tour that I did a couple of days ago. Uh, just answering a few questions and uh, also wanted to cover some of the technicalities and uh, the things I've had to do uh, to the Mangster. All right, let me uh, turn this uh, turn this around and uh, give you a quick overview. All right, so first question that I uh, that I got was uh, with regards to the front brakes. So right now I'm still running the uh, the M uh, MP um conversion kit just a regular i think they're like gear replicas um they're, they're okay um i do plan on uh, converting to the uh, subaru gears um the kit i've salvaged the parts off the donor and uh i do plan on uh on getting that in still haven't ordered the kit yet but uh the uh the bolt pattern is 114.3 or 113.4 never know which one it is anyway it's it's one of those two um it's it's working fine um somebody had to ask whether i was running a proportioning valve in order for the brakes to work the obp pedals have a um it's going to be too dark for you to see in there let me see if i can get a light um let's grab a light here they have a um a bias bar that's adjustable inside the uh the brake so basically it alters the two, uh, the bias between the front and rear. So I don't know if you'll see it here. Probably not, well maybe. Yeah, that screw that's uh, sticking out there, that's part of the bias. And you basically screw it to one side or another and it allows for uh, more pressure on the front master or the rear master. They make a, a kit that allows you to have a, a cable and you can Set, um, set the bias, but basically set and forget. For uh, the clutch, I had mentioned this earlier. Um, I had to go with a 5.8 bore uh, master. The, uh, the, the, the smallest one that um, OBP makes is three quarter inch. So I went with Willwood and uh, it was exactly the same fitment, but they make a 5.8 bore. So now the clutch is actually um, pressable. It's still pretty stiff, but very pressable. The other challenge with uh, the brakes while I'm here, um, the, the accelerator pedal is drive by wire. So there's six wires that come out of the potentiometer. It's, uh, it's basically just like a, an electrical cylinder that measures the, uh, um, the voltage or the, uh, the amps, I don't know, um, that sends a signal to, uh, to the motor. And, um, the, yeah, the way this works is there's there's a primary and an alternate and turn the light off the the, the biggest challenge i had was in the wiring manual from uh, subaru there is no description as to what the six wires do uh so they are color coded but they just go to the uh, the pins on the ecu and uh they come out of the stock pedal but they don't tell you what wire is what so I was fortunate to find somebody on a on a Subaru forum, and uh, they gave me uh, a technical bulletin that um, allowed for the measuring of each one of the the signals to see if they were good. And uh, I was able to reverse engineer that and find out that um, the the two plus five volts that come in from the ECU, the two signal wires and the uh, ground wire, um, the signal wires are shielded. And I, I use the original stock wiring for that. So, um, so that's all set up. Uh, a quick note on the radiators. Somebody had a question on uh, one of the farms. Uh, the radiators are out of a, a Razor. I um, can't remember what model, like a 700 Sportsman or something like that. Um, now, I got them off of eBay and they were like under $100 each. So to make sure that um, I'm, I'm actually going to be able to, uh, to get these in the future. I um, planned ahead and actually got two spares. So, you know, if I, get, if I get a problem with these or if they get damaged anyway, let me, let me pull it out here, show you what they look like. Need two hands for this. So basically, 
It's, um, it's a double core aluminum radiator. And I mounted one right side up and the other one upside down. Uh, there is a, uh, a vent hole here um, that has a, uh, normally a plug. I borrowed the plug to uh, put to make sure I had a spare. Um, and um, the only downside to these radiators is they're, uh, um, I want to say one inch inlet and outlet as opposed to an inch and a half. But uh, honestly, I've had zero problem with cooling. The only issue I had a problem with cooling was when uh, the fan fuse blew and that was because I was running too low of an amperage of fuse and when the uh, the fans went to high speed for too long the fuse blew but uh, the uh, water temperature is exactly in the middle it doesn't budge uh, nothing changes on there uh, as far as the fans they're just regular uh, two well they're not two speed they're they're one speed fans uh, push pull uh, off of eBay pretty cheap uh, I can't remember uh, how much I paid for them uh, but they're basically 12 inch fans um, that um, I've wired using a, a couple of relays, three relays actually, uh, so that I can run them uh, with two speeds. So off of the engine, there's two signals that come in off the ECU. And at low speed, when the temperature is lower, the fans are running uh, in series. So um, the voltage comes in on, on one of the fans and the ground off the of that first fan powers the other fan. So basically I'm running them at six volts or, or in series. And when the second signal is triggered, when the temperature goes higher, um, then the relays flips the fans to run in parallel, running them at 12 volts. Um, again, very rarely hear them uh, run at 12 volts or at high speed. Uh, it's, it's, it's running really, really well. Anybody who, uh, who'd want to run a, um, a Subaru or a water-cooled that have a Mangster, um, I'd highly recommend putting the uh, radiators in the side pod if you're running vented side pods. And as you can tell, I, I didn't even cut out any of the, the side pod. There's, there's no opening at the rear end. The only opening is coming in from that little gap that's between the body and the, uh, the side pod. And again, uh, no issues whatsoever. So. That's for, um, for the radiators. Um, as far as the motor is concerned, uh, somebody had made a comment about um, what I was using for an intake. So because it's a turbo and the, uh, the FA20, the turbo is like right there at the bottom of the, uh, the manifolds. It's, it's a very short throw. Uh, they call it a twin scroll. So the, there's two, um, two inlets. I have the old manifold that I can you yeah, it's under this pile of junk here yeah, I won't be able to pull it out uh, with one hand uh, but it's a twin scroll and uh, it, it spools up really quick like at I want to say under 3,000 rpm pretty much uh, spooled up to what it needs to come out that and for the air intake uh, what I did is I ran a couple of 90s now it would have been better I think if I had run a 45 here uh, to come up instead of these double 90s uh, but I wanted the uh, the intake to be off the ground pretty quickly and I'm running um, this aftermarket uh, intake you know for for people who want to reposition a cold air intake in their uh, WRX uh, so that I can run the MAF sensor right uh, right before the k and filter it is really close to the wheel I, I agree um, <laughs> that that was one of my concern it would have been better if it would be on the inside um, I don't have a TIG welder here to weld it open uh, to make this pipe. Maybe uh, in the near future, I can look at having a one-piece aluminum pipe that has the, uh, the bong or the, uh, the entry for the MAF sensor on the other side. Uh, I did add this uh, aluminum shield that covers, uh, covers the, uh, the k and filter. I think I covered on the last video. I do have to clean the filter maybe once, once per season, twice per season, um, depending on how dirty. Uh, the roads are or where I'm driving. If I'm driving on pavement all the time, there's no issue. Um, and just a quick note on ground clearance. Uh, I was pretty concerned earlier on, you know, I want to run this car pretty low to the ground. It's, it's a street car. And uh, I was concerned that um, it would be too close to the ground specifically to uh, hit the turbo. But um, knock on wood, 
I haven't had any issues uh, with that. I do have the um, the stock uh, skid plate, this aluminum skid plate that I had planned to put uh, underneath. The problem is I'm gonna have to uh, go to the press and press out these uh, these side wings here. They interfere with the uh, with the exhaust. Um, so yeah, that was the reason why that's not on there. Uh, as far as uh, the exhaust, so coming off of uh, the turbo here, um, <laughs> I, I went pretty simple on this. I basically, again, used an aftermarket um, downpipe uh, from, from the turbo uh, that gave me uh, the opportunity to mount the uh, O2 sensors, stock O2 sensors. I could have used the, uh, the stock one, but it's a cast iron piece, it weighed a ton, looked like garbage. Um, so I, I wanted to clean that up a little bit and then uh, I took a piece of, um, of stainless stainless tubing uh, I want to say three inch stainless tubing. They sell these again on eBay uh, It's like a piece of pipe that has a, a 180 and a 45 and you basically cut it and weld it as you need So I just took the 180 portion and uh, welded this um, this greedy greedy uh, exhaust and uh, yeah, it's it's worked well. Uh, I did add these uh, emergency beacons underneath here. Uh, you know, if, if I'm uh, if I'm chase on a uh, group run or something, I can turn these on. They have a couple of modes. They could be like solid or uh, just uh, flashing or alternating. Uh, but it add a uh, nice protection. As far as cooling goes, uh, one of the things I did that's um, I, I thought was pretty clever is the um, maybe I'll get the uh, the light again maybe I put it here so the the hose that comes off the pump here I just turned it around and uh, made it point in front of the engine instead of the rear of the engine so just basically unbolted the two bolts turned it around and that gave me the opportunity to run my pipes um, to the front of the motor. So that was that was a clean setup. I didn't have to bend a couple of those uh, those internal hoses, but just barely. So that was uh, that was pretty good. Now the problem was about the return hose um, to the motor. Um, unlike the uh, the AJ guys who have uh, the opportunity to swap the, uh, uh, the the inlet manifold with the water manifold. This one, uh, I don't think it's doable. You'd have to make a, a new one. And uh, it's, it was too new a time to, to come up with that. So I ended up just using a 180. So you can see it here, this, this, uh, this pipe here. It does a 180 and then follows along the motor and goes to the front. Um, the uh, radiator cap is here. And uh, it's got the pressure relief on it uh, with the hose that goes to my uh, my surge tank. And uh, that, that's been running good. Uh, no problems there. No air in the system. Um, I do have to watch it maybe once per season just to make sure it's topped off. But uh, it, it's, it's been really good. So that's for uh, mostly the engine. The ECU... Um, I won't be able to show you. It's tucked way in front of the motor. I put a, uh, an aluminum bracket and mounted it um, in, in the back of the motor here. Uh, it is accessible if I take the wheel off, uh, pretty much by touch. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's working fine. It uh, doesn't, doesn't need up or anything. So that's, uh, that's good on that. Um, I wanted to touch briefly on uh, how I mounted the intercooler in the wing. As you can see, um, there is no visible hardware on the wing itself or on the wing mount. I do have uh, two, two little uh, mounting screws here to mount the actual top of the wing. Uh, they're just two little fasteners that, that are drilled through uh, the wing support. Uh, that's basically the only mounting that I have. There's no, um, no brackets, no holes, uh, anything like that. So basically the way I did that, get the light out again, okay. um, is underneath this uh, rubber flap here, uh, you can see the actual mount or 
or brackets that hold the intercooler. And then um, there's, there's a piece of teak that's glued to the underside of the, the, the wing support that have two bolts that come out of it. And they bolt to, uh, to a metal support that's welded to the crossbar uh, behind, behind the, uh, the, the body. Uh, I did have to use a, um, a, a custom made crossbar. The, the crossbar that comes with the kit, you know that, that Y here, um, that basically you know, mounts to the, uh, the horns and uh, the frame horns and the roll cage. Um, the, the, this, this space here uh, is not big enough for a Subaru uh, for the transmission and the motor. So what I ended up doing is I made my own and basically it's, it's a piece of pipe. It's, it's, it is curved a little bit, but it's, it's a lot straighter here. From this, from this point to the, the frame horns, it's a lot straighter. And I eliminated this pipe and I added a pipe from the top piece here. And that's where the two brackets are welded to that, that hold the wing. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. So yeah, I have a spare here. Maybe uh, put, it on a, put it on the wall or something. Uh, who knows? Uh, other than that, what else can I show you? Um, the gauge cluster, I uh, showed that on the previous video. Yeah, pop the hood here, the, the roof here. Um, uh, as I said, I needed to run the, uh, or, or have the donor's gauge cluster in the car or hooked up to the ECU so that um, the immobilizer chip would be uh, recognized by the ECU. So I thought maybe I can, you know, just hide it behind the seat or underneath the dash or something. But then, you know, um, I'd have to run all my own, own gauge. So th this has got all the, the stock gauges. So in order to make this, this, this fiberglass um, housing for, for the custom gate or the uh, donor gauges, what I did is I used the, um, the donor plate or the kit plate, the one, uh, I don't know if I have it here. Yeah, here it is. <coughs> so I use the, uh, the dash, plate that comes with the with the kit and uh, I, I use a couple of uh, ABS um, piece of tubes to make uh, make the mold and then I use some uh, uh, car or automotive paint putty whatever the Bondo stuff and uh, and I made that mold and then basically mounted the uh, or lined up some fiberglass on it it came out okay I mean definitely not a pro could have done a better job with the finish. Uh, if I were to do it again, I think I'd come out a little further down here. Um, maybe maybe keep it the full length. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's okay, but yeah. I think that's the, the piece that bothers me the most uh, when I look at the car. Uh, the other thing is there's no, um, there's no glass in front of it um, or no plastic. Um, I thought it'd be a problem, but with all our driving, it has not, so. Yeah, uh, the uh, the dash, I mean, it's normally held on in there. And what I did is um, I have a, a little bracket uh, that's glued underneath the dash with a, uh, a screw uh, on the, uh, the cowl here. And I put a piece of zip tie and it, uh, it holds the dash in place. Uh, quick note on, uh, on these mirrors. So as you can see, they're, they're not turning with the bolt and, and they should be, right? I mean, there's nothing, uh, the, the bolt is going, going through. Uh, I think I showed that on the previous video. I created this um, piece of aluminum and it's basically uh, indexes the, the hex uh, head of the bolt and it, it lines up with the, uh, the piece of metal. So it, it just prevents the bolt from turning. It's, uh, it's working good. I mean. Even when I close the roof here, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. Um, I think I covered the, uh, the the soft top before. Uh, it's held on with uh, Velcro around the, uh, the rear portion of the roll bar. Got three sections here. On the rear, it's just Velcro uh, against the body. Um, that that stays on pretty solid. Uh, in the rear, uh, there's a lot of negative pressure here that accumulates. So I did have to add these two uh, 
Velcro straps. There's a piece of Velcro underneath this piece and it just wraps in and, and ties there. And you, know, you might be curious how I get those out. I mean, it looks like it's pretty stuck, but I can actually put in my hand through, uh, through the motor here between the inner cooler and the uh, and the motor and I have access to it and I just undo it. Um, same with this side. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty much all, all I could think of right now. If you guys have any more questions, uh, please feel free. I'm always, uh, always like to uh, share the ideas that I've had and uh, I've made that. Um, as I said, uh, we're very happy with the build, very happy with the functionality and uh, yeah, um, I don't know if I said it before, these uh, Lotus seats out of uh, an Evora 400, um, they have the heated mats in them, they were heated. So I just hooked them up to, uh, to power and put a little switch underneath the, uh, the seat. And uh, yeah, now we have uh, nice heated seats on both sides, along with the, uh, the vintage air heat that comes in, uh, it's working good. A uh, quick note on the, on the heating system, um, the pipes that come off the motor, they're 5 eighths, I think, just the regular cooling pipes, cooling hoses. Um, I was not sure whether they needed to have a uh, constant circulation. So there is an H pipe that has a, uh, that allows for a crossover uh, just underneath, uh, behind, uh, behind the passenger side side pod. So basically when, uh, when I shut the, uh, the, uh, the heat, shut the, that circulation, um, the uh, the H pipe allows for circulation of that uh, of the fluids back to the motor. Uh, no one could tell me for sure whether it was required or not, so I thought I'd, I'd be safe and, and put it on there. Um, right, uh, one last thing. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for this, um, and that's our rear view mirror. So I'm going to turn the power on here and uh, give you a quick view of uh, of the power mirror, uh, the rear view camera mirror. So France got me this uh, for a birthday present after consulting with some club members and uh, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. So basically uh, it's, it's a, a front and rear rear view camera. So right now you're looking at the camera view uh, of the front, obviously I can switch it to the rear and that comes, the rear comes on automatically when I put it in reverse. The, the other thing is it's it's continuously recording both front and rear on an SD card, and it's good for almost a day. Uh, the other thing is, it shuts off after a few seconds if uh, the motor's not running. Let me see if I can turn it back on. Is it's got a, a GPS built in uh, for speed. So, yeah, hold on, turn the motor on. Battery is... Uh Autovox, and I believe that's an X2, but they uh, they stopped making this one. So, um, yeah, take a, take a look at Autovox if you're interested. I had to make my own bracket uh, to mount it up there, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really really cool, and I really like the size. 
Uh, even if the rear visibility of the Mangster is pretty slim, you know, with the wing, uh, between the wing and the top. But uh, having the camera for uh, reversing and uh, having continuous recording, really awesome. Anyway, uh, I think that covers it again. If you have any specific questions, anything that I've missed, uh, please let me know and uh, be happy to answer them or give you a, another, another segment of our, our Mangster. All right, take care, guys.